Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm really excited to share my updated version of the teacup and saucer. So about, oh gosh, I think it was, well it must have been around Mother's Day actually. I done the teacup and the gift box or the display box for it and you've really enjoyed it. So many of you still now send me pictures and already you've started to share Christmas versions of it over on Mixed Up Crafters. And I've already had this on my list to do and I wanted to do a hot chocolate mug in a display box. It's a real, um, this has turned out better than I thought and um, my little, I should show my little sketch actually, I don't know where I've put it, but um, yeah I just love how it's all come together. Now there's a few differences with this, obviously you can see that we've got a mug instead of a, a, a teacup and then this is much taller and slightly thinner and this one is on a hinge. Okay, now this is going to be in two parts, so I'm going to show you the mug today and then tomorrow I'm going to show you the display box. Okay, and also I still do need to do it and I'll do that ready for the next tutorial, but I want to have a nice sentiment on here like surprise or enjoy your treats or something like that. But just to give you an idea, I have stuck this down there because I just thought, it, I think this is a lovely gift for, for you know anybody, but if you've got another crafty friend, this will look so lovely just in their craft room afterwards. I just think it's a really nice piece. So... I have put in here, this will be a real candy cane, this is just a plastic one, then I've just put some hot chocolate sachets, some marshmallow, some chocolates, I just think it looked really really nice, it's just a nice little gift and you could put a nice little piece of jewellery in there as well, I just think it's lovely, I am, again, I always say if you're proud of something then don't be afraid to show it and I am, I'm really proud of this one. On the top here a lot of you recognise this, this is the deconstructed bow that I like to make, so this is the same as the big bow topper but this is just very very small so I've just cut all those pieces much smaller if you want to see how you make the big one check out this one here and just reduce your sizes and you'll get a smaller one yeah I just think it looks really nice and I've used it's like a glitter ribbon that's it's almost like a little bit plat it's like coated I think that's what it is but it's um it really keeps its kind of 3d form so yeah I love that and I've used the same on the bow inside there so let me show you how to make the mug first and then like I said tomorrow will be the display box Okay, so this is the paper pad I'm using. It's the 8x8 First Edition Believe in Magic. It's really cute. You've got the little penguins, you've got the robin, you've got the polar bears, and then all those lovely pattern papers. And lots of them have got texture as well, especially that sparkle one. It's really, really nice. You can just kind of see it there because they show the same texture on the front cover here. So this cover's got loads of texture. <laughs> Again, all the links will be shared below. So I'm going to do the same pattern paper for the mug. I really like that one and um, you can see the one on the back there as well because I'm going to fold it over. I don't know how well that picked up on camera but you can just see there where it folds over. Again, you don't have to do that but um, I just thought it looked quite nice. So I'm going to get straight into the scoring and the measurements. So this is a piece of seven and three quarters by five inches okay if it's directional paper you want to make sure it's facing up the right way and you want to score at one and a quarter two and a half three and three quarters five inches six and a quarter and seven and a half okay then rotate it onto the short side and you want to score at one inch and at four and a half okay and that, I'm just checking, oh yeah, then you need to do another little bit here. This is for the box that becomes the, kind of the stand, I guess, or part of the mug. So this is a piece of four and a quarter by three inches. Along the four and a quarter side, you want to score at one inch, two inches, three inches and four. And then along the three inch side, you want to score at one and two inches. So it's just a one inch cube that we're going to make. Okay, so first of all, with the mug, if you fold that top smaller score line, so you'll have that one where we scored at one inch, that one you just want to fold and burnish under, but the top one you want to bring over the other way. I know we didn't fold it, um, we didn't score it correctly, but it should be okay if you just carefully fold it over. If you're worried that you might get some cracking, take it, put it back on your scoreboard and score it on the other side again. Okay, so I'm just going to burnish that one burnish that one I mean you may want to have yours a bit taller or you may want to stick some white card over the top of that one I may do that actually I might try it a bit differently we'll see anyway I do like that one and then just open it back up again and then all of these score lines here just fold and burnish each one because that's going to create the shape of our mug okay so you'll have this tiny quarter inch tab on the right hand side and you'll have all those kind of square shapes along the bottom. You want to cut up each one just to that first score line. So just cut straight up. 
And then this last little one, you'll have this tiny piece here. Just remove that completely. And then you'll have another tiny piece at the other, the top end there. Just take that out. So you're just left with that tab like this. Let's just take a little bit off there. And I've taken it off on a little, just a slight angle, not too much, ever so slightly. Okay, because that is going to fold down and still be seen. But what will happen is that's all going to wrap around and that tab is going to stick it together and then those pieces that you folded over should join up nicely. All of these are just going to fold in on themselves and then we'll be sticking that all together when we add this base here and the handle. Before we stick it together we'll do the handle now actually. So I have got just a piece of matching cardstock from the pack and I've got here is a two and a half inch scalloped punch and I'm just going to punch a circle out there. And then using my circle dies here, because I don't have a circle punch that was, it's almost like I need a one and a half, let me show no, that was it, it's one and five eighths, the one and a half it was just, it, this is a scallop one, I need to get a one and a half straight punch, but you, wanna, you want a die, yeah it's this one here, a circle die that's about one and five eight, eighths diameter and I'm going to die cut that in the middle. Okay, because I just want the outer ring and then I'm going to cut it in half and that's going to kind of give you your handle. So I'm just going to quickly get that one die cut. Okay, so I've just run that one through. So you want something that looks like that. It doesn't have to be a scallop, so don't worry if you don't. But you want your ring to be, if I take into account the scallop bit there, it's just under half an inch. Okay, you'll see again there. That's what I'm trying to achieve. All right, then you want to best to use a scoreboard you score at seven eighths of an inch i just want to make sure i get this right so just score at seven eighths of an inch keep the stylus in its track so you continue down to the bottom piece there okay and then snip away that piece okay so you don't want the smaller piece you want the larger piece pop it back in your scoreboard and then score again at a quarter of an inch again keep that nice and flush there like so and then just fold those pieces like so and they're going to be our little tabs which we are going to stick inside this tab so it will become a little handle all right so you want to just get something that's roughly like that size that I've just showed you so two and a half outer ring with a one and five eighth ish inner ring and then just cut and score like I did there Okay, so I'm just adding some glue to the backs of the tabs there and on the side, so there's my quarter inch tab here, on the other end just stick it inside like so. If you just go to pretend to close it just so you're happy with the positioning of your handle you want it I guess kind of just under that folded piece so there's the folded piece there it's just coming under that a little bit just make sure if you fold it right over then you know that you've got it right you know on that end there okay and now with this piece here you can add glue all along that one and then just close the whole thing up you can lie it flat because it's all equal sides like so and that way you know that you're going to get it all in fact I would say do that because that way you know it's all going to come together properly so just spend a few minutes just making sure all that glue sticks properly okay so I'm just going to leave that like that for the minute now I'm going to move on to this because we'll stick all that down because we need this to be ready so you just want to fold and burnish all the score lines on this piece okay and then with the tab on the right hand side you want to cut down all of the score lines to that first score line okay like so and then this last little piece just cut away cut a little wedge there just like we did for this piece and turn the whole thing around or we'll flip it so now the tabs on the left hand side cut down that little one first and again little wedge just so now you've got that tab and then cut down every one again like so okay because this is going to be a cube so we're going to close in everything so on this little piece here you just want to pop the glue 
fold the whole thing in half so you've got two squares on this side, two on this side and the tab and just stick that all down. Okay, and then all the pieces now you can just fold in and I'm just going to add some glue onto the top, fold one, add some glue, fold another, add some glue, fold that one and then just pop your finger inside there just to make sure it's all stuck down and then again on this side you don't want to push this one in too much because you that's it we've got nothing to be able to um, you know you can't get your finger in there once these, this is closed so try not to let it kind of cave in on itself just do the same thing I'm like oh don't put glue. well it doesn't matter because we're, we're going to be gluing this all down if you've got anything overhanging I wouldn't worry about it to be honest because you're probably not going to see it but if it's yeah I would say see I've got a piece overhanging just here then I'll, I can trim that but I'd stick that to the base of the mug rather than the base of the base <laughs> because you might see it okay so but you can trim that off so it doesn't like I said it doesn't really matter like so but you just want this little cube all right okay so now back to the mug what you want to do now usually whenever we work with shapes like this we work with opposites together so like I would stick the two opposites together but they won't quite meet it's not going to matter what you want to do is just pop a little bit of glue on the kind of corners and just fold in them like so like I said don't you know worry too much for the minute it will all kind of make its shape Right, and then put some glue around all of that kind of inner area, centre area, and then I've just die cut this one and I'm just going to stick that over the top. I've got my finger in my handle there. <laughs> okay, and now you just want to kind of start to shape it. And what I would say is line up one of your straight sides here with your mat, okay? So, for example, there, and then make sure the other top one, this one here, is straight. And if they're both straight, every, all the other sides will fall in together. So, yeah, just spend a few minutes just making sure that your top and bottom, whatever side you choose, the top and the bottom are perfectly straight. And then the other two sides will all take their shape. It's the same as my rocket box that i done. Okay, I just stuck the top and the bottom sides and then the other two sides, you know, well, four sides, they all kind of found their shape. And the worst case is, is that it might go a little bit more squashed. But look, if I push that in, see it creates the shape that we want. Or if you kind of go like that, it creates a more squashed look. But that, when you look at it straight on, which is how it will look in the box, it's, it's okay anyway. But I do want to try and keep it more hexagon like that. Okay. I'm not going to put one inside. You can do if you want. Actually, I will do. <laughs> I guess it just helps, so we'll just drop that one in there. Okay, and now we've got our little mug. It's so cute. Next, I'm going to use my hot glue now, and I want to attach this cube to the bottom here. So I'm just going to line it up with this front one, okay? And just make sure it's in the kind of the centre of that one there and the back there and that it should lie in the centre of the points there. Okay, so just spend a minute making sure that all sticks down. Okay, then I've got these circles here for the base. So I've got a three inch piece of, three inch diameter circle in 300 GSM cardstock. The same in some fun foam and the same in pattern paper. And I'm gonna stick those three together. If you don't have fun foam, just cut a few more in this here. And it would just, I just think it looks quite nice if I bring that up there. You have the dimension, just gives it more of a, a mug look. <laughs> and then this one here is two and a half, yeah, piece of foam and the cardstock. But I just need to get my pattern paper to go on top. But you just want to stick them all together. So I'm going to go and get my pattern piece done for the other one and stick all these down. Okay, so I've just stuck. The smaller one on top of that one it looks like the top of a jam jar okay I haven't didn't have the same bluey color but when I sit that on there it actually looks really sweet so I'm not too worried then I just want to add a bow onto this while I've got it still kind of unattached I'm also just going to add a little bit of glue just under the ends here just so that they stay down okay now I want to decide I think I'm going to go yeah silver bow on this one 
So this is this, um, I picked it up from B&M quite a while ago and I had a pack of, I've got another, might have been a pack of seven or eight. I've got quite a few of them, but the, the turquoise one there, that is a gorgeous colour, it really is. And um, but the thing I love about them is they really keep their shape. Because they're kind of in between paper and I just think they're a coated paper. Anyway, I'm going to cut a little um, bow, this one. Okay, and then... Just get that glitter off there because I don't want it to interfere with the glue. I'm just going to pop some more hot glue in the centre there. And then stick this in the centre of the base. And there you've got your Christmas mug. I think it looks so cute. So that's it for today. That's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial because not everybody will want to make the display box. So I thought if I keep the two videos separate, then um, it's easy for someone to just you know go to them that way and also you may just want to make the box on its own there's lots of people that might want to put something different in there so yeah tune in tomorrow for the gift box to display this again I'll just bring it in here so you can see the final result I think it looks so nice and I like that it's stuck in there because that person can hold and lift it like this and nothing's going to fall out and I may well once I've you know put the proper stuff in there I'll probably put it in a little cello bag or something with a little you know tie at the top so again nothing really does fall out but yeah they're super cute there's this one again so I hope you've enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up if you have and hopefully you'll be back again tomorrow to see how I make the box thanks for watching bye